the environmental recipe that set victims up to be vulnerable to predators are poverty, um, sexual abuse, physical abuse, um, dysfunctional families, although I believe all families are dysfunctional, <laughs> some even more so than others, which creates um, those voids that are within, opens the door. Those are the vulnerabilities. Whether your father's not home or he's never told you he loves you or he never gives you that hug, that creates a void where you seek that attention outside of home. Um, you know, there's even your sexual abuse increases those vulnerabilities in a sense where being with this trafficker, being with this pimp who protects me, who says he loves me, and yes, I'm physically abused, and yes, I'm sexually exploited, but it's a lot better than my stepfather coming into my bed every other night. Uh, those vulnerabilities are some of the greatest. Um, when a lifestyle of sexual, sexual exploitation is better than what you have at home. Um, what's that? What do you From my experience, the critical point for a victim to leave the predator, to leave the trafficker, is when your will and desire to leave that lifestyle is greater than the risk that you have to take to walk away. Um, whether it means physical abuse, uh, whether your family is threatened, that will and that desire to be beyond that point in your life is greater than the risk that you have to take. And even when leaving the lifestyle, just as with drug abusers, it takes practice. You know, it takes practice. It's not it's not often that you just wake up one day and you're done with it. It takes time and time again of even going back into those relationships. Yes, even more than one time. And it's very similar to domestic violence relationships where it's hard to understand why that wife won't leave her husband uh, beating after beating after beating. And you, there's, the, there's a trauma bond and there's an emotional bond and there's the psychological bond is so strong that it, affects, you know, the decision making of whether to leave and whether to stay. Well, the pivotal moment for me happened several times because it takes tons of practice. Uh, I left on numerous occasions and he followed and I went back and my son, he, he was the deciding factor for me when I had to make a decision for him. And it took something outside of me to give me the courage to just walk away. And at that point, you know, it didn't matter. It didn't matter what happened. It didn't matter how it happened. And I literally had to fight my way out of that. The most important thing I would want the general public to understand is that they're victims. They're victims. You know, quite often you'll you'll hear the words, you know, well, she's fast and she's, she's promiscuous and she's this and she's that and she's up to no good and she'll never be anything. And the general public fails to realize that it started somewhere. She wasn't born that way. It started somewhere and somewhere within that time before this point, she was a victim. She was a survivor before she even was sexually exploited. To not turn away. A simple, are you okay? You know, is there anything I could do to help you? Um, as well as, that's all I can.